I recently worked on a Revit model that included a whole shopping mall. The problem was that my team only needed to document one of the tenancies. Because the model included the mall, it had heaps of work sets and so many views. Finding the views that I needed was an absolute nightmare. Look at all these views. Where does one even start? So handling the entire mall in the same Revit file made no sense. In this video, I'll show you how to split Revit models for file optimization. For this tutorial, I'll be using the Snowden Towers Revit sample project. Although this is no shopping complex, it is a fairly large development with different types of occupancies, including a cafe and common areas. To begin with, I have created a series of work sets for the initial model segmentation. These include the sample links associated to this project. For demonstration purposes, I'll be using one of the studios as the breakaway component. The goal is to isolate this unit and to separate it from the rest of the complex. I'll begin by turning off the annotations. But I'll leave the scope box category active. Next, I'll draw a scope box around the subject area and give it an appropriate name. After that, I'll create a new work set. and give it the same name. Make the new work set current. Now I can grab all of the studio relevant elements and assign them to the studio work set. I'll turn the work sets display on so that I can track this by color coding. On screen, everything green is within the studio work set. Be sure to include the floors as well. On the 3D view, I'll crop the view using the scope box I previously created. And then isolate the studio work set by closing all of the other work sets in the project. With the studio elements isolated, I now select all elements and use the filter tool to remove the section box. While doing this, I notice the floors category is missing. Using the view tabs under the ribbon, I revert back to the floor plan view, where in fact the floors are not selected. Using the tab select function, I can select the floors by tracking the status bar. I'll switch back to the 3D view for clarity and from there move up to the ribbon and create a model group from the selected elements. Keeping up with the theme, I'll name this studio to match the work set name. With the model group created, I'll now select it which opens up some additional options on the ribbon. A warning appears and I'll expand to get more information about this. The warning informs that all associated views and their related annotation elements will drop off. This is just something to be mindful of. It is helpful to note the impact of this is reduced depending on how early in the project 
you run this workflow. Now I'll select replace with a new project file, which saves the model group as a new project and then replaces the group instance with a link in the current project. I'll save the groups in a separate folder within the project directory. As shown, there are already two pre-baked group links. Here I'll retain the group name as the file name. And now I'll let Revit do its thing. Generally, workflows of this nature return some kind of error. This is not necessarily something to be afraid of, but rather something to be mindful of. In this case, it's referring back to some of the annotation elements that have fallen off because of the broken references caused by the breakaway elements enclosed in the Studio work set. With all of that done, I'll now review the impact that it's had on the host file. On the project browser, find links, where I can see the Studio work set highlighted with a blue link arrow. I can also see the previously referenced cafe and foundation segments. These are highlighted with red crosses, meaning these are broken links. I can fix this via the Worksets dialog and opening their corresponding Worksets containers. Let's focus back on the Studio link. Via the project browser, I can now open this link as its own project file, meaning that I can make changes independently as required. These can be saved and linked back to the host model when required. I now have successfully split the model into separate smaller files for optimization. In the second part of this tutorial, I'd like to highlight another scenario where this workflow could be of benefit. On screen, there is a master file with several separate buildings on the same site. All buildings have been modeled in the same project file. Now, Imagine a scenario where a consultant advises that one of the buildings needs to be moved. It needs to be raised to accommodate better water dispersion. Simply grabbing the model elements doesn't work. On screen, I select all related elements, but the move tool is grayed out. This is because Revit simply doesn't allow elements with non-common relationships to move in synchronization. As an alternative, I'll be using the same workflow to split, separate and isolate building E as an independent working file. As a caveat, I'd like to call out that this is best done early in design. Starting with a scope box which encloses the subject area, create an independent work set for the subject elements. Use the work set display to identify the subject elements by color ID. Use the scope box to focus in on those subject elements. Group the subject elements. Name the group. I recommend that the group matches the work set name. Save the group to a new project as a link. Review the warnings on subject elements, noting that these are typically related to annotative relationships. Manage the exports well, and then use the project browser to find and manage the exported elements. In this instance, I can now move building E independently within the host model, meaning that site to building height corrections are a breeze.